Good morning everyone, it's Mrs Casey here. I'm here with you this morning to talk to you about Holocaust Memorial Day. Through this assembly you'll learn a little bit about the Holocaust but most importantly you're going to give, be given the opportunity to learn about some of the survivors of the Holocaust and hopefully this will prompt you to take a moment this week to stop and to think about both the victims of the Holocaust and the survivors. The 27th of January is Holocaust Memorial Day. Holocaust Memorial Day is the day each year when we remember the six million Jewish people who were systematically persecuted and murdered by the Nazis and their collaborators during the Holocaust. And the Holocaust was the attempt by the Nazis and their collaborators to murder all the Jews in Europe. Six million Jewish men, women and children were killed in ghettos, mass shootings, concentration camps and extermination camps. Holocaust Memorial Day is marked on the 27th of January because this is the day that Auschwitz-Birkenau, the largest Nazi death camp, was liberated. Here we have Susan Polak. Susan grew up in Hungary and she experienced anti-Semitism from a young age. In 1944, Susan was sent to Auschwitz-Birkenau, where she was separated from her family. After the war, she found out that more than 50 of her relatives had been killed and that only she and her brother had survived. Susan was asked, how do you get over such an experience? Is it possible to walk away and to learn to live with all of this? How do you find the strength? She replies, life is precious. You can go in one of two ways, up or down. I chose to walk away and to rebuild my life. There was no revenge and no justice. On Holocaust Memorial Day, we also remember other groups of people who were persecuted and murdered by the Nazis. These include Roma and Sinti people, sometimes referred to as gypsies, disabled people, gay people, Jehovah's Witnesses, political opponents and many others. And these different groups of people were given different coloured badges in the concentration camp, as you can see some examples of on the screen here. Here we have Rudolf Brasdar. Rudolf Brasdar was the last known concentration camp survivor deported specifically for homosexuality. He was sent to prison twice and he was then deported to Birkenwald concentration camp in 1942, where he was subject to forced labour for 32 months. He says, if I finally speak, it's for people to know what we homosexuals had to endure in Hitler's days. It shouldn't happen again. After the Holocaust, the world said, never again. But humanity has failed to learn lessons from the Holocaust and genocides continue to happen around the world to this day. On Holocaust Mem Memorial Day, we remember the millions of men, women and children who have been murdered in the genocides which followed in Cambodia, in Rwanda, Bosnia and Darfur. Eric played for Kigali's top football team. During the genocide in Rwanda, his fellow players protected him from the killing. Today, Eric runs an organisation which uses football to promote tolerance, unity and reconciliation in the UK and in Rwanda. So what is genocide? Genocide is when a group of people are targeted for destruction just because of who they are, such as their race or their religion. Genocide does not just happen out of the blue. It is the result of prejudice and persecution, which sees a group treated differently from the rest of society. On Holocaust Memorial Day, we are reminded of what can happen when prejudice and persecution are left unchallenged and of our responsibilities to stand against these processes when we see them in our own communities. This image shows the 10 stages of genocide and helps us to know what warning signs to look out for. The stages may occur simultaneously or they may occur in a different order. Across the UK, thousands of local events and activities take place every year in schools, communities, libraries, prisons, museums and galleries, in faith groups and many more. 
These activities include candle lightings, performances, art projects, readings, talks, just to name a few. Each event is an opportunity for people to reflect on the lives of people affected by genocide and to challenge prejudice, discrimination and hatred in our society today. So why is all of this important to us? People are still discriminated against today because of their religion, their race, their sexuality or another element of their identity. Whilst we are not at immediate risk of genocide here in the UK, hate speech and prejudice are frequently seen online and the number of hate crimes recorded each year has been increasing. Outside of the UK, at this very moment, genocide is taking place in the region of Darfur, which is part of the country of Sudan in Africa. So what can we do? On the screen here are lots of different ideas of things that individuals, groups and schools have done in the past to mark Holocaust Memorial Day and to remember the people that have been murdered. By holding this assembly, we are already doing something to mark the day, to learn about genocide and to remember all those that have been affected. We're going now to listen to a poem. Um, the poem was written by Charles Whittaker and it's been read to us by Olivia Coleman. Auschwitz by Charles N. Whittaker. The semi-quaver chugging of the train on the track and the people on board who will never go back and the terror in the eyes of all the young ones to go with no one knowing as the train comes to slow. Those men at the station as the ramps drop down, where humanity lost is the only crippled sound. Hope gone for those who stand behind the hard, sharp wire, and the smoke in the towers rises just a little higher. And the blue ink stabs a little harder in the skin, above the veins of despair where murder let it in. And the terror in the eyes of all those about to leave, another train on the track no last-minute reprieve, and the slow, crotchet chugging of the train on the track, and the people on board who will never go back. Auschwitz. Young people can get involved in Holocaust Memorial Day through a youth programme, as part of this programme, you will learn more, you will take part in challenges and you'll be supported to do your own activity for Holocaust Memorial Day. The web address is on the screen for anyone who is interested in finding out more. So it's hmd.org.uk forward slash youth. Let us all today commit to do something ourselves, either in our classes, either when we're out on social time, either in the corridors, on the playground, to mark Holocaust Memorial Day and to stand up against prejudice, even if you just take a moment today and this week to think about the survivors and the victims of Holocaust Memorial Day. Even if you hear something that's not very nice, you say to that person, don't say that. It's a simple thing, but it can have a huge impact. And we all have a responsibility to try and stamp out prejudice, to stamp out discrimination. We can find out where genocide is taking place. We can learn about those affected by it and we can tell others what we have learned. We will end with a short film, reminding us of the power that we all have to stand up and speak out against hatred and prejudice today. My voice, My voice can My voice can my voice can. <laughs> My voice can transform. 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 Like, like before your very ears. My voice is as big as my imagination. Our voice has travelled through generations. My voice can make you feel... Oh. My voice demands to be heard!
My voice comes to you through poetry, orality, passionately, because words are free, free. My voice speaks for my family, whose voices were silenced. It's not always easy, but I try to use my voice to speak out against hatred. Use your voice. Your voice. Your voice. To speak out against injustice, humiliation, and hatred. 